Welcome back to part four of painting 3D prints for beginners. In this series, we are covering everything you need to know from taking your print off of the print bed, all of the painting things right in between, and then having a finished work of art ready to be displayed on a shelf. And in this video, we're gonna be finishing the base, but not accepting what comes off the print bed and just painting it. We're gonna add, modify, and make it that much better. So let's get started. If you're just now joining us, be sure to go back and watch the other videos where I explain all of the other processes that got us to this step. Where part one, right here, we talk about everything you need to know to rip off the supports and clean up your model and get it ready for paint. In part two, we talk about everything you need to know for priming your models and then also getting those base colors down on your model. Part three was about the devil is in the details, doing highlights, shading, and also those fine little details that make a model pop. So I wanna ask you a question. Are your painted 3D prints right now literally just painted 3D prints? Or are they works of art? Where something that if you give it to somebody, they wanna display it on a shelf, or they'll actually pay you for it. Or you give it to them, they're like, oh wow, thank you so much. I'll just put it in here. That's what this video is all about. What can we do to actually make them works of art? And this is not accepting what comes off the print bed. Just like this, I am going to talk about how we can modify, add, and adjust this to actually turn it into a finished piece. So let's get into it. When you're looking at your model, inspect it, think about it. What can you do? What can you add? Don't be afraid to glue things to this or take things away. I could take my soldering iron and start scratching the heck out of this thing and try to make it look good. But I know my soldering iron skills, I'm not gonna make this look good. Maybe yours are. What if I textured this or sanded it really hard so it'll actually make it more textured? Because right now, look at this. It's super smooth. And what kind of ground has a bunch of rocks in it and then suddenly it's like glass? Unless I guess this is ice, then then we're done. Congratulations, everybody. Ta-da! But seriously, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to apply some sand to this and actually really make a real ground and make these rocks look as real as possible. So let's get started with that process. So I'm going to make this entire area with like a gritty texture because I want it to look like an actual ground. And these are the things I'm going to be using to do that. I've got this Gorilla Glue epoxy and I could put a link to this in the description below. Then I'm going to use one very old nasty brush because when I'm done with this, this brush is going to get thrown out, one time use. Then I've got just a little plastic container and I'm going to throw this away when I'm done because we're putting the epoxy inside like that. Um, then the other stuff I have is this. Yeah. So I have this quartz rocks and I'm going to be mixing that into this little compound I'm mixing. It's just basically like little rocks and things like that. Uh, where do you get this? I have no idea because my dad gave it to me because he's a mason So I'm sure you can find it somewhere. I can look and if I find it, I will put it in the link in the description Then I just have some regular play sand normal play sand like there's nothing special about it The last thing I have is silica sand So this is super fine sand and it's just gonna help give a nice little texture to everything now, the big thing here, you can just use regular sand, like play sand, and you wouldn't have to actually do what I'm doing, but the ground is made up of so many different size particulates and things like that, and I'm just going to try to give a nice variety. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a good amount of epoxy in here, then start adding some sand, adding some silica sand, and then some of those quartz rocks in there. And once I have that, then I'm going to take my little tub and I'm going to start brushing all of this all around here and trying to avoid all of the rocks. And that's pretty much it. Once that's done, we're going to let it dry and then we'll move on. All right, here we go. And if you're not familiar with epoxy, what it is, it is a two-part 
glue that it's basically when these two combined they create like a super glue and now what you got to do is you got to mix it up real good and what I'm doing is I don't care that you know there's going to be grains of sand that I can't get to or anything like that to paint or to look at because this isn't for like a visual uh, thing like I'm not gonna just paint it on there and be done I'm actually going to be painting over top of it so there we go and since this does set in five minutes we don't have a lot of time so I'm gonna add some of that move to this get some play sand in there and then I'm going to get just a little bit of this stuff there we go and I'm going to just basically stir this up and create like a mesh of slop and it looks like I added too much so this is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use the whole bottle because I don't care why not I literally bought this for this project okay stir it up you need to get it stirred really good I don't recommend doing it the way I'm doing it right now you need to mix it up beforehand and not have sand mixed in it but you know it is what it is so now I'm going to just get this all mixed in here because I want a sludge Now what we're going to do is start painting this on. I'm going to grab it. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to get some of this silica sand. Just pinch a little bit. And I'm going to kind of cover this up like this. And I'm going to try to cover as much as I can here because we want that grit. And this, some will stick, some will not. And that's fine because we're going to brush it when it's done. And the last part. I'm going to grab just a few of these pieces and kind of press them in. So what I did is I got a little bit of the quartz and I sprinkled it on there and pressed it down. Then I also got some of the silica sand and then did that. It's pretty much good. So now we are just going to let this dry for a little while and we should be done. I am going to see if I can wipe off some of the rocks because I want to have the rocks. Okay, so now it is all nice and dried. And the one thing you want to do is just grab your brush, okay? And realize you're not going to use your brush anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this brush. And all I'm going to do is go like this to remove any extra sand that is on there. yeah all right so we've got some good texture here now one thing I do want to tell you you do not have to use epoxy if you don't want to you could I honestly use Elmer's glue uh, Mod Podge I've even seen people use some grout like tile grout there's so many different things you can use here I just used epoxy because I knew it was going to be really strong and harden well so it's one of those things that figure out what you want to do to it like there's no one saying that you have to do it just like this and you could use other things to attach to this as well I just kinda of want you to start thinking outside the box so right now I'm gonna move on to the next step which is cleaning all of this sand off of my desk and then we're going to paint this whole thing black and get it primed alright so now I'm just going to prime this model completely black with some acrylic paint and I talked about priming in the second video, so if you missed that, be sure to check it here. And let's get to it. All 
All right, so we've got this all dry, and look at this texture. You can't get that on a 3D printer. And this is what I've been talking about, just adding a little extra things to really make your prints just stand out. Now, we dry brush. I am going to make this more of a dirt texture, and what we're going to do is I am going to get going to go back to this burnt umber and I am going to start dry brushing with it. Now I'm going to try to avoid putting my finger in the paint. Yep, that happened. So I'm going to go over dry brush. I'm just going to get this saturated. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably missed the second video of this series and I'll put it right there. There I covered everything you need to know about dry brush. So I'm going to try to avoid the rocks, but get all of the grit, okay? And for this, I'm going to have my brush just a little more wet than I normally do for dry brush because I kind of want it to get in there. You can see I've got it sporadic. And the key here is you really want to start doing random stuff. Now we're going to go to the nutmeg. And this is going to be more of a regular dry brush because I don't want everything to show through here. Like, I just want to glaze the top of the, the sand and grit here. Now we're going to use this caramel. So you can see there, it's really coming together. I really wanted to make it seem just like a rugged, dirty ground because the model was painted to be pretty dark looking. So I definitely want to stay true to that. What we're gonna do is I might hit a few areas a little harder just randomly so like this spot I want to have more and maybe this spot back here I want to have more there you go and you know what maybe this this corner back here I'll hit it extra hard there we go kind of blend that there we go so now we've got a really good rugged kind of look to it so the one color I wasn't planning on because I honestly forgot about the rocks is I'm going to be using this folk art medium gray and I'm going to actually go in and paint every single one of these rocks as our base coat I'm gonna squirt some in add a little bit of water use my handy glasses then I'm just going to get some really good coats on here. And yes, I am painting every little tiny rock. It is those little tiny details that really make it. And then I'm going to go back over and get any other rocks that the black is shining through because I do not want to see it. I do want this to be my full base coat for this gray. So if you noticed, I put a very thick coat and I dabbed it on there because I want the paint to dry and not be smooth because I want that natural look. So sometimes you want that to be to your advantage of paint strokes, uh, like thick lines with the paint. So you can actually dab it and get those kind of techniques right there. So you can already see this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll come back to it. All right, so this is all dry, and we've got some good texture because we let the paint build up. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush with this Prairie Sage from Folk Art. So just so you can see the color difference, this was the steel gray, and then now this is the Prairie Sage. So I'm going a lot lighter this time. And I'm trying to be very controlled and only get on the rock. So we got a little bit of a texture going on now, and we want to push it even farther. So now I'm going to use a pale gray. This was the steel gray, prairie sage, and then this is the pale gray, which is basically just a little bit of black mixed in with white. And I want to use this super sparingly because the highlights are going to show up like crazy now. And I'm just picking random spots on the rocks to dry brush with this. Because I don't want it to be way overpowering. So there we go. Now I'm going to take a very fine point and use that pale gray and highlight some of these little tiny rocks. Okay, so now I've got some nice little highlights using some of the grays. You can kind of see right here, it's looking pretty great. I think we're ready to just clean up our edges. So I purposely did not sand my edges because I wanted them rough looking. So I, when I swiped that putty on there, I actually, that's what I was going for. Uh, if you were wondering why I didn't actually sand it, it was actually on purpose. And when you're doing something like this, don't feel like you actually have to give it like a clean edge or anything like that. You can actually just continue this. Like I could have continued this all the way around the edge, but I actually like it when it's got this little bit of a contrasting cut mark, I guess however you want to describe it. Okay, so I have my base done, but we are not completely done. All right, so you see that we've got the rocks all nice and dry brushed. We've painted all of the little tiny rocks, and let's get close here, you can see them there. So everything is looking really nice, but there's still something that we could add to this. Like, what could we do to really bring this out? And the best thing that I'm thinking of is adding some flock and some tufts of grass. So I have these right here. And these are essentially little tufts of grass. Well, this is dead grass. I have living grass right here. But I figured since this is kind of a desolate looking area, if we could add in maybe one or two little tufts of grass in different spots, it would really just bring this thing to the next level. And what these are is basically static grass glued to like hot glue beads. So we can actually cut these up and put these in different spots. Like I don't know if I actually want an entire one by itself right here. I kind of want to incorporate it. And that's the thing, like even with just this, you don't want to just use it as it is. Sometimes you do, maybe you want a little bush. But for this, I'm really wanting to have just like little tiny pieces here and there just to bring a little more dynamic to this. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to get my X-Acto knife and mat. So I got a, my mat here so I don't cut into my silicone pad. And then I also have this little set of tweezers that I have that I'm not going to lie, I love and I use them all the time for so many things. Uh, not just 3D printing, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hold it and I'm going to cut a little piece off like so, then another little slice and peel this away. Okay, so I got a little tuft right here and then I'm going to cut this in half to create kind of a bigger tuft right here. All right, so now I'm done with that. And now I'm going to get my super glue 
all I'm going to do, and now I want to figure out where I want to put it. So I think I'm going to put this right here in that little corner. So I'm just going to hold this like so and put a little drop of super glue on it. So now I got my drop of super glue and I'm just going to press it down right here. So there's a little tuft right there. And then the other tuft, since I cut it in half, it's kind of like a sliver. So I'm actually going to kind of poke it into here. And so I'll get another glob of glue on here. And now I'm just going to kind of shove it in this crack right here. And there we go. And so I have one more piece. And I don't know if I want to put it somewhere or just leave it be. And looking at this, maybe I don't want to use it. And that's okay. So sometimes you just got to like think what's too much and what's just enough. And we are done. But there's one thing I do want to mention. This is one type of flock. There are so many different other types of flock that you could add. Um, like another version I have is just this blended turf. It's a green blend. And you can see it is basically like a sawdust that's like green. And you can just get some white Elmer's glue and brush it in some areas or even some super glue and you just sprinkle it on and let it dry. And then when it's done, you just blow away the excess. So there's so many different things you can do. And I can make a future tutorial on just different types of flock and things that you can add to bases such as this. But for now, we are going to call this done. So let's clean off the table and get everything set for assembly. Okay, so everything's nice and clean, minus my mat. And we're gonna take our finished thing. And when it comes to actually assembling things, one thing you honestly always wanna make sure of is when you assemble it, make sure you're assembling it the right way. Because if not, we're going to have thing that is tripping. If I would have put glue down just now, this would have possibly been a catastrophe. So when you're doing your final assembly, I just want to make sure you always put your pieces together before actually even having your glue in your hand to make sure that this is how it actually goes together. I know it's kind of dumb, but trust me, I've done it and a lot of other people have done it. So for this model, all I've got to do is I'm going to put some glue in this hole and then slide it on there and we're going to call him done. So I'm going to go ahead and glue him up and then it leaves us to just one more thing and let's get to that. All right. So the thing he's done. But before we get to the money shot of this guy, I definitely want to give you one last tip. And this is the most, most important tip out of this entire series. Do not compare yourself to other people. You might have painted this exact model and you're like, ah, oh, mine's not as good as his. Or, ah, oh, I saw this other guy painted and it looks so much better. Don't do that. Don't get in your head. Because I know I did that in the very beginning and I'm like, I'm never going to get good. But then I learned and realized one thing. I can only compare myself to myself. And I only compare myself to the last thing that I painted. So... What am I doing on this next paint job that I can make it a little better than the last time I did it? That's the things that you need to focus on. How can you keep getting better? If you can keep getting better by just 1% every single time, imagine 10, 15, 20 paint jobs later, your stuff is, isn't even going to be comparable to when you first started. And that's what I hope for you. So I want you to keep practicing and keep painting. That's why I focused only on one main technique in this entire series, dry brush. I want you to practice dry brush because it is such an amazing foundation and you'll use it in almost every paint job that you do from this point on. So thank you so much for watching and I hope this series truly has helped you. So let's jump to some money shots of this guy. This was such a fun paint job and I really hope you guys were able to take something out of this series. Please leave a comment in the description and tell me what you thought. What was the most important thing that you learned out of this entire series? 
And if you're on Instagram, tag me at It's Mead Made. I would love to see what you have been making and what you were able to learn from this series. Other than that, I hope all of you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.